What's going on everyone, Brad here. In this video, I'll show you how you can use REW to figure out where to place your subwoofer in your room for the best response. So you may have heard or seen other methods of figuring out where to put your subwoofer with probably the most notable being the sub crawl. Now this literally involves putting your subwoofer in your main listening seat then crawling around on the ground on all fours while playing a bass heavy song or scene. Listening for that sweet spot where the bass sounds full, tight and clean and not muddy or boomy. Where it sounds the best is where your sub should go in your room. Well, in theory at least. It is a great starting point and it is better than just throwing your subwoofer in a corner and calling it a day. But there are some issues with this method, most notably relying on your ears to determine the best frequency response and lifting your subwoofer a couple feet off the ground and into your seat, which I really don't think anyone wants to do. Luckily, it's a pretty straightforward process using REW, and since you're using actual measurements to compare data, you're pretty much taking the guesswork out of it. Now, this can be time consuming depending on how many measurements you end up doing, but it can result in better bass response in your room and you won't have to lift a potentially super heavy subwoofer a couple feet off the ground. So that's a huge plus in my opinion. Now, before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you don't miss out on a new upload. I will also have links to a few different measurement mics down below, as well as some other links to things like my home theater setup and calibration tools that I'd recommend. Now, these are affiliate links which help support the channel at no cost to you when you use them. Now, in order to follow along with this video, you're obviously going to need a few things. First, a measurement mic like the U-Mic 1, along with a computer or laptop running REW, as well as something like painter's tape or duct tape, along with a pen or marker. You also need a subwoofer cable, and I'd recommend a pretty lengthy one, depending on how large your room is. Alternatively, if you do have something like SVS's tri-band wireless audio adapter, that will work as well. Now for this video and for reference, I will be using an SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofer along with a tri-band wireless audio adapter. Now we do wanna make sure our receiver is set up properly before starting. First off, disable any type of room correction like Odyssey, YPAO, or Direct Live. And if you're using a mini DSP, disable any EQ or house curves there as well. We don't want any EQ or room correction applied to the sub while we're figuring out the best spot as that can negatively impact the measurements. You will need to run room correction at the end if you end up changing where your subwoofer is located and you're probably gonna have to redo your house curve. Also, we wanna make sure the trim level of the subwoofer in the receiver is set to zero dB as we will be adjusting the volume on the sub itself and we can use the trim level to dial it in later if we need to. And lastly, we do wanna raise the crossovers in the receiver to the highest they'll go for testing because we just need to see our subwoofer response and don't want the main speakers playing anything in regards to bass during these tests. Now you can return your crossovers back to what they were after you're done. Also, if your subwoofer has spiked feet attached to it, you may want to consider removing them while testing to make sliding the sub around the room a bit easier. So after all that fun receiver stuff is done, we're almost ready to get started, but we want to make sure that REW is set up properly first for taking measurements. So we have Odyssey open here. You have your U mic plugged in and we have the HDMI output from our laptop into the receiver. And we verify that down here in the bottom of Windows, make sure that your AVR or receiver is selected or pre-pro, whatever you're using. Once we've done that, we can come up here into preferences, click on preferences again, and for drivers, just set this to Java for now. For what we're doing, that's perfectly fine. And then our output device, just make sure the Denon AVR is selected. And then for the input device, we wanna make sure that the UMic 1 is selected here. And then we wanna click on the Cal Files tab here. Now this part is very important. You wanna make sure that you've downloaded the calibration files for your UMic 1 from the Mini DSP website. Your UMic 1 should have come with a little card that had a code on it that you can download the calibration files. Now I have the 90 degree file here. You can see the little 90 degree part here in the, in the text. I have that loaded up because I have the UMic one in my main listening spot pointed straight up at the ceiling. So we're good to go there. We can just exit out. And then now what I wanna do is I wanna click on the generator. And then I also wanna click on the SPL meter. And you should see the SPL meter come up right here. We'll go over these settings real quick. For the SPL meter, just make sure that SPL is selected. You're on C weighting and it's set to S or slow. And that's gonna be good to go there for the SPL meter. Now for the noise generator, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that noise is selected, pink random, and then speaker cal first. We're gonna worry about 
the sub cowl in just a second. And then if we come down here, we wanna make sure that just our left channel or right channel, it doesn't really matter as long as you've level matched your speakers. We have our left channel selected here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the play button. It's gonna play a test tone. And then I'm gonna adjust the overall volume of the receiver not the individual levels of each channel until it reads 75 decibels on this meter here. So we're just using the left channel as that basic reference volume. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've hit the play button again to stop it and we got right to 75 dB. It's okay if it's like 74, 75. Uh, we just don't want this changing. So make a note of what that volume is on the receiver. For me, it was minus 17 dB. And now we wanna do the same thing for the sub. But instead of adjusting the overall volume on the receiver like we did before, we're gonna adjust the volume on the subwoofer amp itself. So in my case, I'm using the PB1000 Pro. I have the SVS app on my phone, so I'm just gonna use that. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that subcal here is selected and adjust it to that same 75, 76 dB. It's gonna be a little more inaccurate because it's just how low frequencies are with the U-Mic 1 or measurement microphones in general. A little deviation here and there is not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and adjust the volume on the sub itself till we hit 75 dB. So now that that's set, we basically want to use our tape and our marker to mark the position of each of the measurements that we're going to do. Wherever your sub is right now, we'll just say that's position one. They don't, you don't need to be any more descriptive than that because we're gonna use the tape to do basically all the work for us. So essentially I'll take out a piece of tape, write position one on it, and we'll do a measurement and then we'll move the sub, change that to position two, and we'll do a measurement. So what I'll go ahead and do right now is do our first measurement before I mark it, but then when I go to move it, I wanna make sure that I mark on the ground where that position one is. So click on measure, and then we'll just label this position one. We want our range to be from 10 to 250, and then minus 12 dB FS, perfectly fine. That's what we set up with the generator here. So we don't want to change that. Our length 256K is fine. Output, we want to just use the left channel again. So we'll just click on start and REW will do its thing. I'm going to click on the all SPL tab. And if yours looks like this, just hit the 10 to 200 because we're really not focused on anything above that. So that is our position one. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write position one on this piece of tape, put it on the floor, and then we'll move on to position two. All right, so I have position one marked on the floor. I typically put the tape on the front side of the driver, kind of right in the center, so I know exactly where it is. But then I moved the sub to position two, I marked that one, and then now I'm just gonna do another measurement. And what I was gonna add real quick is, we're not really too concerned right now at this moment with what our frequency response looks like because we're, we're essentially going to pick the best one after we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure position two, but before I do that, what we wanna do just to take out another variable is we want to verify our subwoofer level again because anytime we move it around the room, we might need to make a small adjustment to the overall level of the sub. It might need to be brought down a little bit. It might need to be brought up. So to do that, we'll just go back to the generator. We haven't changed the volume on the receiver at all, so we don't need to go through that process again. So generator SPL meter and we'll just hit play and make sure this reads around the same level that it did before. All right, so there we go. I actually had to add two dB to this, so it's minus seven now. So basically that's what I mean. And so now when we measure, we know that it's gonna be around the same level that it was before and that we've taken that variable out. So we can close these out here, go ahead and do our position two measurement and just click start. All right, so you know a little bit of a difference there, but not too major. Again, we're not really too concerned with that right now because we're gonna be taking multiple measurements. So I'll go ahead and move it to position three and we'll do that one real quick. All right, so I've moved the sub into position three and marked it. And basically we're gonna do the same thing we did before. So before taking that measurement, click on generator, SPL meter, click on that play button and make sure that it reads around 75 dB so it matches the other two. All right, so I actually had to bring it down to minus 10 on this one. So we're good to go there and we are ready to take that third measurement. So we'll exit out of here, click on measure, and we'll label this position three. Little quick tip here, just double click on the very end and it'll highlight that last number and just type in three. That way you don't have to type out position every single time. So we'll just click start and let REW do its thing. 
All right, so we've now taken three measurements in the right corner of the room. I should add that, by the way. And we've marked all those positions on the floor so we know exactly where the sub was, or the front of the sub at least. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a bunch of measurements off camera because I'm not, you kind of get the process now. It's pretty self-explanatory. Move the sub, make sure the volume or the level is good on the sub, and then take a measurement, rinse and repeat. So I'm gonna do uh, as many measurements as I possibly can in this room, wherever the sub will go, and then I'll come back and go over those measurements and we'll pick the best ones. And I'll also give you a few tips here and there on like what to look out for and what to avoid. All right, I'm back and I've done 10 measurements throughout the room. I did the left side, I did the back here. I don't really have the option to do anything back here so couldn't really do anything there but I have 10 measurements to compare and it is a lengthy process I mean it's just a lot of the same thing you know taking a measurement then moving the sub verifying the level taking the measurement again so let's go ahead and dive into REW here and take a look at these measurements so you see there's a lot here but we're just going to uncheck everything but the very first one and we'll start from there so that was our very first position again we've marked all these on the ground so not too bad but uh you know it could be better so we moved it to position two what did that look like i'd actually say that that one is a bit better we got a little more response here on the low end even right down here so we're still you know losing a bit here but this would eq fairly nicely with odyssey or you could do some type of house curve or even a flat curve with this very easily if you just have a single sub so i would say Position two is better than position one. So going from there, position three, not better than position two at all. So we have this massive, I'll just unselect position two real quick. We have this massive null here, and this was further out into the room. So it was kind of closer to where my media rack is. You, know, you see it in my, my other part of the video where my, my movies are and stuff. It was right kind of beside that. And it's just not really a good spot for it at all. So position three, a no-go. So we'll move on to position four. This was in the back left corner right here, right next to me. And as you can see, again, not really good at all compared to position two. Uh, we're losing a lot of output down here on the bottom. I would say this is a no-go here. I'll move to position four, which is further back on the left wall here. And again, not good at all. We have this this dip here, this this null, and then we have this massive null here. So definitely not a good position to be in back there either. Move on to position six, which is even further. I did four on this sidewall over here. I just kind of kept going as far back as I could. Again, dip is still there. Now if we compare it to like position five, position six is actually better than that, but not really optimum there. We'll go to position seven, and again, we're just losing all of this output here. I wouldn't even really consider this if you had just a single sub. Multiple subs, maybe. But if you have four, you, again, you're kind of limited to where you could place those subs. So you might have to do, you know, one in each corner. With multiple subs, it kind of evens out the frequency response, so it's less of an issue having things like this in a single sub. And then moving on to position eight, which is now in the front left, it's between basically the corner and the front left speaker. Not too bad, it's it's way better than, you know, any of the ones in the back on the back wall here. So definitely would pick that over those. So if you had two subs, then I would definitely say put one on the right and one on the left. Go through these measurements here and see. So position eight is looking really good. Not as good as the one on the right, position two, but still not too bad. If you had a second sub to place there, it would kind of even out and you wouldn't be able to tell the, you know, these nulls were there at all. Position nine, uh, not really, uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's it's give or take. If we pick the best one, it's it's really hard. I, I would maybe say don't do position eight because it has this funky, crazy null here. Pick from these two. I would say between the two, it's kind of a crapshoot, really. But position nine looks the best. That's about three feet from the corner. So if you had multiple subs, or say you know you had two subs, you know you could go with position two, which is on the front right, about three feet on the sidewall, and then the front left around the same you know, three feet, four feet from the wall. But as you can see, I mean, the process is relatively simple. It's not super complex or anything. It's just some of the same steps over and over again. 
but you really take the guesswork out of picking out where to put your sub. You know, you can see it right on the graph here. Now, if you're worried about being able to localize where the bass is coming from, I really wouldn't be because our ears are really not great at localizing bass below, say, 120 hertz. So if the best spot for you is like right behind your listening space or in the back of the room, set it there and give yourself uh, some time to get used to it. You know, two, three days, maybe even a week because our ears get so used to the way things currently sound that our brains kind of need some time to adjust. What you may actually think sounds worse, sounds better. You're actually hearing more detailed bass, just maybe less intense in certain frequencies. So definitely give yourself a little time. And then once you decide where your sub is going to kind of live, definitely rerun Odyssey. And if you've used mini DSP for anything, definitely go through that process and set up your house curves or whatever. If you haven't seen my video series on that, definitely check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll put a card above. And also I'll leave a link in the description as well as in a pinned comment to my Odyssey setup guide so you get the best results from Odyssey every single time. If you haven't seen that video, it definitely will help you out with Odyssey, making sure you get the best sound. Now, I do wanna add that this method will work with multiple subwoofers. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, each position you measured will remain identical with any subwoofer you put there, save for the limitations of the subwoofer itself. So if you have multiple subs, for example, you really only need to go through this process with just one of your subs. And as long as you remember the positions you measured and save the REW data, you can simply place another subwoofer in that position and be good to go. It's still probably a good idea to take a measurement of that sub to verify its response is identical. And you know, it's just a couple of seconds, so why not? If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that thumbs up button. Also, have you tried this method or the sub crawl? And if so, what were your results and which one did you end up liking better? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.